Tonight we begin with politics in a dose state, especially the forthcoming local government elections scheduled for the 2nd of September. We'll hear from those involved and the concerns of the opposition parties. Also bear in mind that the governorship election follows after the Biosaco and Imo governorship elections. Now, barring any last-minute changes, all is set for the 2023 local government elections. And as part of preparations for the local government polls, the Edo State Independent Electoral Commission has scheduled a meeting with relevant stakeholders in the state for August the 24th, 2023. The Administrative Secretary of the Commission, Sandy Osayande, in a statement said the meeting with the stakeholders would hold at the Commission's conference hall in Benin City. While the main political parties in the state, including the ruling PDP and the other opposition parties, are gearing up for the local council polls, some of the candidates have expressed concerns about the commission's preparedness for the exercise. So let's get talking now. I am joined by a member of the Labour Party and the past president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Olumide Akbata. Welcome to Sunday Politics. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for having me. I am. Um, well, excited and surprised I could catch you in Abuja at this time because I know you you have a rally in uh, tomorrow. Well, yes. Uh, so thank God for thank God for the efficiency of uh, air travel. So hopefully, touch wood, I should be in Benin uh, tomorrow morning in time for the in time for the rally. This rally is really almost pretty much a grand finale of sorts uh, that the. Uh, the Labour Party has organized uh, for its uh, candidates in the upcoming um, uh, local government elections. And um, we are delighted and we are excited that uh, the presidential candidate of the party, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, will be in Benin with us on uh, uh, tomorrow to join in the rally. And uh, so he will also be handing party flags to our 18 uh, chairmanship candidates, who in turn will hand flags over to our 192 councillorship candidates. So uh, I think the Labour Party is fully geared up and ready to go uh, as far as the local government elections are concerned. You know the rallies, uh, rallies for local government elections are not popular in Nigerian politics. It's mostly um, presidential and then state, not to mention the uh, National Assembly election. Those are the times when rallies. Why is the Labour Party doing this differently? Well, Terry, I'm, I'm so glad you've asked this question, you know, because, because that is the lopsided or upside-down approach to politics that some of us are really concerned about. Politics and governance is about the people, and the local government, uh, the local government is, the is the tier of government that is closest to the people. But like you've rightly pointed out, the elections that lead to... to, uh, to the elections for local government uh, councillorship or chairmanship attracts little or no attention whatsoever. It's very worrisome, very, uh, it's actually quite, uh, it's, it's a bit of a paradox that the election that is most important, that is closest, or the chair of government that's closest to the people, attracts little or no fanfare as far as when it comes to the elections that lead into those offices. So, but you know the, which is one of the attracting or the endearing features of the features of the Labour Party, it's, it's the fact that it is pro-people. The Labour Party is pro-people and um, we, we are uh, very keen to ensure that we, uh, we get governance closest to the, as close to the people as possible. And, and which is why um, if others don't find the local government elections important, we definitely do. And we're throwing all we have at it. Uh, this is a standing-all election. The election is taking place in Edo State. Standing-all elections. Uh, that's the only local government election taking place all over the country. And uh, we're giving it everything that we have. On the 2nd of September is actually the day of the elections. And um, we are definitely ready to go. It's important. Um, I mean, education. A huge chunk of primary education is the responsibility of your local government areas. Healthcare, primary health centers okay. are the responsibility of your local government areas. Even infrastructure, trunk, zeros, or I think they are called, responsibility of your local government areas. These markets are the responsibility of your local government areas. These are issues that touch the, the one we call the common man. These are issues that have a direct bearing on his or her life. 
And so it's important that whoever is superintending that level of government, that we pay close attention to how he or she emerges. We will talk about um, the commitment of state government and the electoral umpire to ensuring a free and fair process. But while we talk about the Liberal Party and its preparedness for this election, the question would have to be, how ready are you for this election? And it's mainly because uh, some would say that the Labour Party can just go to sleep considering the fact that it won the uh, presidential election in the state. And I understand, as you had mentioned, that the presidential candidate of your party will be there. Uh, is this the level of preparedness that the Labour Party is showing? And you can confidently say that you, you would sweep that, that election, bearing in mind that it is really unlikely, uh, considering the political terrain of Nigeria, for a ruling party not to sweep local government elections. I think one thing that the elections of uh, the presidential elections taught us is that uh, it's no longer business as usual. I think uh, for those of us who participated and we watched, we saw that um, the political landscape in Nigeria has been radically altered and uh, for good. So uh, how prepared are we? The, the Labour Party, uh, I'm a member of the party and I, I can't speak to the issue of preparedness. The Labour Party is not resting on its laurels. So we're not just saying because we did well at the presidential polls, we'll just sit down and expect that things will work themselves out. Absolutely not. We are fielding candidates for each of the 192 councillor slots. We are fielding candidates for each of the 18 chairmanship slots. We are pounding the streets, knocking door after door. We are enlightening the people because one worrying, one worrying feature of this election is that we find that there's almost zero, almost zero voter enlightenment. We are really surprised that not much has been done to enlighten the people. So our job has been two-pronged. Firstly, alerting people to the fact that these elections are, are imminent, and then also selling our candidacy, selling our party to the people. So we are extremely geared up, we're, we're pumped, because um, we have done the needful, we have done the homework. Across the three senatorial zones of the state, we have gone door to door. So. Um, uh, yeah, maybe in the past it was almost given that uh, the incumbent or, or the, 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 the party in power would uh, clear the polls in local government elections. But I, 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 I urge you to pay close attention to the elections of 2nd of September. There will be many surprises. Uh, it is no longer business as usual. I think we're going to have upsets. We're going to have across the state because the people, are, people, are, people can see and people can, uh, can actually... Uh, they're discerning enough to understand. And it may have been the case if we had gone to bed and thrown our, our hands up in despair and say, oh, oh uh, as they say, then go write the result. But we're not accepting that. Uh, we're not, that is that's not going to happen this time around. But how united is the Labour Party, considering the leadership crisis uh, that struck the party since the uh, presidential election? Uh, I mean, I can speak to, speak to the Labour Party in Edo State. The Labour Party in Edo State is united. Um, there will always be friction, there will always be issues in any family, in any organization. And um, as, um, as um, upstanding, uh, should I say, citizens that we all are, we have, uh, we have left the matter to the courts to determine. Uh, one, we have gone to the next year of, uh, I think the Court of Appeal has ruled on the matter, and I'm sure if the, if the pugilists, let me call them, decide to go next, upstairs, I'm sure the courts will do the needful. That has not in any way taken anything away from the efficacy uh, of the Labour Party in Edo State and I dare say all over the country. And um, I mean, you need to come to Benin to see, it's, it's, um, we're on air, we're, 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 we're campaigning uh, vigorously as the law permits. And so I personally have not seen any uh, negative effect of the um, little bump in the road, which is what I like to call uh, our internal uh, little family quarrel. Uh, I haven't seen any negative effect on the, on the efficacy of the party or our impact on the polls, on the in, in, uh, upcoming polls. Are you worried about the level playing field or otherwise uh, in Edo State? Is the ruling party playing fair with regards to the processes leading up to the election? Well, my focus is on the state independent electoral commission. I, I really... In, uh, in, in matters of this nature, I really ought not to be uh, p uh, focusing on the state. No, no, but you know the states, some states, uh, some, we've seen elections where uh, the ruling party wouldn't allow you to use certain facilities or hold uh, events in certain areas. Is that non-existent in a those states? Well, you know, I can only speak to my own experience and, and I really do not know 
of any such incident. My worry, my worry is with regard to the State Independent Electoral uh, Commission um, because uh, the expectation is that, um, you, know, you know, elections are, uh, it's not only when you hear of rigging or violence that an election has been marred. Where the processes leading up to the election are not kosher, are not up to scratch, there can be issues. So first and foremost, why not enough? Why no enlightenment, voter enlightenment? Don't they have a budget for that? Why are we not even see what are the guidelines? How are they going to conduct the elections? Are you using the beavers or not? Um, um, why, 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 does it, why, why, do, why does it take the, the candidates themselves to have to go educate the people that there's an election coming up? We have at least four or three or four local TV stations in Edo State. Why are we not seeing uh, advertorials and stuff telling us that the elections are upcoming? Why are we not seeing, uh, um, um, you know, the normal, what you would normally see when an election is imminent, of how people can be, how you vote, where to, where to, where you, where to thumbprint, and all of that stuff. It's, it's really worrisome. And then, because what that does, it engenders, firstly, a lack of awareness, and then apathy, really, because the people, frankly, frankly could not care less if nobody has really alerted them to the fact that there's an election that is imminent. That does a lot of damage to the process, you know what I mean? So I. I am, I am worried, and uh, for me, I am a lawyer. I, there's always what you call the presumption of regularity. I want to believe that the state has empowered the, the, the independent electoral commission as it should, and has left them to do what they need to do. I want to believe that budgetary provision has been made for, for their activities. I want to believe they are training their workers. You know, I really, I really am careful about, you know, the, the, the stories we hear, you know, it's, it's, it's election season, all sorts of stories are bandied about. One, is, one has to be careful. But the feedback is really not good, you know, with regard to um, how the, the commission has fared so far or how it has, um, how it's conducted itself so far. So I call on them for the, for the time that is left to try and, as much as possible, gain some more ground and inspire more confidence amongst the people, the electorate, and the, and the, and the contestants. It doesn't seem like there's much time left. We're, we're, we're counting weeks now. But if you have all these concerns, I know that the commission has scheduled a meeting for the 24th of August. Before this time, have you had uh, to engage with the commission to voice these concerns? Or what sort of engagement have you had with the commission leading to this? Well, I mean, the uh, Labour Party in the Edo State, to, as far as I know, has continue to engage with uh, the commission. The commission is led by the Honorable Justice Oyomire, retired, and they've continued to engage with the commission on, on different levels, on, for different matters. For example, um, quite a number of our councillorship candidates were unable to submit their forms, were not cleared. Uh, we had to engage with the com commission regarding late submission and what the law says. We've also had to try to find out from the commission um, what 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 uh, method will be adopted uh, in the voting? Because we're quite, we're quite clear on what the law says, and then we're, we're, we've been trying to get feedback from them. I have a video I watched of the, uh, of, the of the chair of the of the commission who had mentioned that uh, they will not be using the BVAS, Who had also in that video? I, I don't know what the event was where he was speaking at, and uh, but it's on his own video. He had also mentioned that. Um, uh, as far as chairmanship uh, candidates are concerned, when the elections are concluded, the, vo the, the, the votes for the, chairman, the chairmanship candidates will be taken to another location to be collated. One just gets a bit worried when you listen to stuff like that. But uh, I'm, not going to go I'm not going to go by a video. I'd rather just go by guidelines that have been uh, issued, speaking to specific issues, so that we can, we can all be confident and comfortable that uh, all will go well and all will be... Uh, will be done properly. You know, I'm tempted to ask this. If you have all these concerns and uh, you've not really had an engagement, the Labour Party has not, perhaps, there's nothing no, no, clear. No, 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 Terry, I've said that the party has engaged. Yeah, well, if it's not yielding, it's not yielding. So the question would have to be, what sort of, con what level of confidence do you have in the State Electoral Commission to conduct this election, considering that up till this moment, the method of voting is not clear? So we are confident enough to continue, not to stop, confident enough to continue to engage with the electorate uh, while we keep an eye on developments at the commission. 
There is, as you have mentioned, a stakeholders meeting coming up on the 24th of uh, August, a couple of days away, where a lot of our concerns, if not allayed by that time, will be presented. But we're grateful that that uh, forum has been uh, called. And then, of course, um, and you know, we, the, the, the courts remain there as our, uh, as our um, last resort in the event that our, our fears, our concerns are not uh, allayed. But, but um, we are confident, um, you know, we, we at those state, and since, since uh, 1999, with the emergence of uh, the advent of, uh, of uh, uh, democracy, we, we, have, we have been left without local government administration for about eight years. Eight years, you know, uh, and most of the time, elections are held, and you find that a party in power sweeps all of the, sweeps the polls, and so we are not going to let the concerns that we have now about the process force us into reticence or force us into, uh, 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 how do I put it, giving up. I think we will be, we, it will be to, we'll be shooting ourselves in the foot if we do that. So we must, as the Americans will say, walk and chew gum at the same time. Focus on the process while we try to fix whatever glitches we think there are. Now you have fears about uh, perhaps the rescheduling of this election. I mean, because, I mean, this is not the, the very first date of this election. It's been shifted at least four times. Mm -hmm. You have fears about it. Well, that remains a concern. That remains a, a major concern. And, um, I mean, I, uh, I was in Benin uh, earlier on this week, and uh, I, I got uh, from sources that I would normally consider to be reliable that, oh, that is on the cards. But, again, you know, there's only one source of information that is credible as far as the elections are concerned, and that would be the commission itself. So it, we, one cannot preempt that, but in response to your question, yes, and it is so in, in any, any, any organization would be naive not to have uh, consider all scenarios. What will we do in the event that the polls are postponed? What will we do if not? So all those things have been considered, you know what I mean? But we do, it will be foolhardy of us not to take that into consideration because it has happened before. This is a very important election, not just for other political parties, but for the Labour Party, because it would like to build on the success of the uh, um, presidential election at this tested strength to be sure that it did not win the presidential election because of the popularity of the candidate, but it has a growing strength in the state. So how important is this election to the forthcoming governorship election in the state? Extremely important, Terry, but I think I must make the point that um, um, the Liberal Party is pro-people. So I think the immediate objective is to, uh, we want to establish our, our credentials as a pro-people party. We want to exhibit the fact that we are very concerned about people, the people. You know, one thing that uh, you find in Nigeria is that everything else is taken into consideration in politics and governance, except the people themselves. That is really concerning. And the Labour Party has come to show that we are here for the people. That is what attracts many of us to the party. So uh, it is important. Our, 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 our success at the Guba polls will really, really uh, will, uh, will flow would, would flow from uh, how well we do the, the local government polls. But I must make the point that um, um, that is not the main objective. The main objective is this is, the, this is the tier of government that is closest to the people, that impacts more on the lives of the people. And we find out that nobody really cares about that, but we do. So we intend to do well. And, then, and, then, and the expectation is that if the people see us do well, at the polls and also when in governor, government, at the local government level, they will reward the party when the Guba elections uh, uh, are upon us. Well, speaking of which, um, the governorship election which we just talked about is, uh, is almost here. You just joined the party. Uh, and there are concerns as to why you've joined the party. Some say that you'd like to be governor of Edo State. So before I ask you about your political intentions, I'd like to ask you what your take is with regards to governance in Edo State. And I ask this so that we understand that you are in touch with the people of Edo State. So, yeah, so um, governance in Edo State, governance in Nigeria, as I have tried to uh, point out in my previous comments, 
my concern really is that uh, the people have been taken out of the equation. You know, so which is why um, you can't travel from Benin to Auchi. You can't get out of Benin. You can't, the roads are impassable. I mean, I just drove on the roads a couple of weeks ago and it's just, so, and it's the people that are applying those roads, but it really doesn't matter because they don't matter, right? Uh, um, you find that um, the schools, um, I mean, Edo State is not just Benin City, right? You go around the state, the schools, you know, the markets. My, my take is that um, we, must, we must come down to the level of the people and address the issues that are most important to them. And I think that is lacking in Edo State. I think the people are still uh, holding on to or left with the short end of the stick. And, and in, in fairness to those at the helm of affairs presently, this really is a story of government in Nigeria. The people tend to be forgotten. And the accountability is almost zero because the people uh, have been taken out of the equation. So Labour Party, I think, uh, which is what I think endears the party to the people, which is why you see uh, that fervor and that uh, fervent, uh, uh, almost, uh, almost uh, hero-like adulation for the candidates uh, of the Labour Party is because the people get it, they sense that for once you have a group of people who are interested in, the, in, in what, uh, what, is, what, is, what they, the people, want. So it's just, for me, we're pro-people, and, and that must be that must be the objective, that must be the compelling, uh, uh, that must be the driving factor. And what, what is, what's what's best for the people? That's why you join politics, is it? Absolutely, because I'm just, I mean, I, I, I go around the world, you go everywhere, and it's, it's really, governance, governance is about the people. And, and the systems are made to work, uh, the processes work, the people, there's a, there's a social safety net, and the people are, are the people are, are, are the people are, how do I put it? They're, they're, they're well catered for within the context of government and governance. But you come home and you find out that you just do a vox pop. You talk to the people and, and, and they, 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 they feel, they disconnect totally. And I, I, I must tell you, Terry, I wonder how those who, who run governments at different levels, how, how well they sleep at night. Because, you know, when you look at the country, you look at the people, and then you juxtapose that against what our potential is, what our resources are. You, you must be, you must, you must, I would have nightmares if, if I was, there's, there's a problem. If you were governor. Uh, yeah, if, if I were governor. <laughs> Do you want to be governor? Do <laughs> no, I want to be governor? I'm, um, let's put it this way. I, I have joined the party. I'm thinking to myself that, uh, firstly, let us organize ourselves. I'm, I've, put my hand on the plow, I will not be looking back. And as events unfold, as opportunities arise, uh, I think the mindset should be that we are ready to serve at whatever level. We are ready to, you know, work hand in hand with like-minded, with kindred spirit, spirits, and work towards the uh, betterment of Edo State and Nigeria. I think that, that, is, that should be where we leave it at for now. You know, if you become governor, you'd be coming at a time uh, when there's so much distrust between the people and the government, especially quite recently, just a couple of days ago, when the president announced the five billion, uh, NEC announced five billion naira palities for each governor. And the people said, no, you can't entrust that to the hands of governors. And the reason is they've shown that they cannot manage or they will politicize this whole process and it will not get to us. Is that a concern for you? And how can that level of distrust be addressed? I mean, can you blame the people? I can I mean, I, I, they, of course they will not trust. They have been seriously disappointed by governments. So, uh, like everybody else, I think anybody who aspires to political office must first understand that you have to eat hum humble pie. You have to go back to the people and Trust is earned, right? So you have to go and earn their trust. You have to demonstrate to them that indeed you mean what you say, you say what you mean. Uh, when you say good morning, it is actually morning. You know, and, and for me, 
it's, not, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. If you have not given anybody, or you've not given the people reason to trust you, they will not trust you. But, but I mean, it's, um, it's tough for those who will eventually uh, uh, come into office, you know, in the years to come, because they have, there is a trust deficit that they need to bridge. They need to deal with that first, so that, to get the people to believe again, to say that indeed, okay, maybe we can try this guy out. Maybe and you have to quickly, you have to hit the ground running. You have to demonstrate that uh, you, 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 your, your word is your bond. You can, you can be trusted. Absolutely, Mr. Olumide Akpata. I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, you, I'd like to thank you especially because. Yeah. You almost didn't make it, but you had to. So thank you very thank much. You, thank you for having me. And we would speak with you again when uh, there's an official declaration of your intention for maybe governor. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> God's spreading all our lives. Absolutely. Thank you very much for your time.